All right. Um, so this is Chris McGrath and Dory Kellner, and they're going to talk to us about finding purpose and alignment in our career. Hey, welcome everyone. Um, so we're grateful that you've chosen finding purpose and alignment in your career as your final session of the day. And I invite you to put aside your devices and find a comfortable seat. And let's all take a few breaths together before we start. You might want to close your eyes or lower your gaze softly and bringing your full attention inward. Becoming an observer of your inner self. So you might question, why are you here today? Why have you chosen this particular session at camp? So I invite you to bring your attention to a time that you felt truly fulfilled. Noticing all the details of that time. Where were you? Who were you with? What sights and sounds and smells and tastes can you recall about this time that you felt truly fulfilled, and truly happy. Think of all the details with all your senses. And noticing that feeling of joy and fulfillment arising in you, notice where you feel that in your body. What does that joy and fulfillment feel like when you experienced it? Connecting with that true, what you truly desire And what thoughts and emotions and body sensations arise with that feeling of connecting to your purpose? Now letting go of that vision and just sitting with how this feels within you. And knowing that you can bring this up at any time in your life. When you're trying to find your purpose, you know what it feels like. So now asking yourself, what is my greater purpose? What makes me feel truly fulfilled? So holding on to that feeling as we begin our session. If your eyes were closed, you can open them again. And transitioning back into the room so that we can introduce ourselves to you. So my name is Dory Kellner. Uh, I'm the Vice President of Human Workplace at Esteemed. And I've been a technologist my entire career. And I often found myself in workplaces that didn't bring me much fulfillment. Um, so I started my own Drupal agency about 20 years ago. And it was intellectually challenging. It was exciting. It was fun. Um, but it still didn't feel like my life's purpose. So I decided to go in and study 
study what really truly mattered to me. And now I design human workplaces, which are organizations whose cultures help people to thrive in work and life. And that's what I do at Esteemed. So I have really worked very hard in my life on finding my purpose and reorienting my work to feel more fulfilled. I'm going to pass this over now to Chris and he can introduce himself. Thanks a lot, Tori. And I, I can't agree more with Dory's points, you know, I feel like I've always been interested in technology, but I didn't know exactly how I'd use that and uh, wound up entering the workplace at a really early age. So I'm a tech leader. Uh, I'm the founder of Celebrate Drupal and Drupal Contractors and numerous other things, uh, including this great thing that we're building called Esteemed. And um, I'm so fortunate to have the many people that are working with me to do this. And I think that really comes down to me having found my purpose, right? And then being able to articulate that to other people and them agreeing like, yeah, you know, that's, that's something that I wanna help with and that I also feel is intertwined with my own. Um, so, you know, I've been, I found this thing like Dory, you know, Drupal, long time ago. And that was really funny because in a sense, like I was already tired of the web. The web was already like dead, you know, at the time, if you will, right? Everybody already had a website. They didn't, you know, it was kind of eking along and we needed database driven websites to sort of revitalize uh, that business and that space. And so that happened, you know, and that that's really something I've always been so grateful to Dries and the Drupal community and, and just, you know, that vibrancy. And again, that passion, that challenge, the you could do anything, you know, with this super exciting stuff to me because I am I am a builder, right? Personality type, what can I say? So uh, in any case, done a lot of great things with Drupal and uh, been fortunate enough to apply my purpose, find my purpose. I think I kind of am lucky like that you know i i am used to just sort of doing and and uh often that has to do with helping other people because that's kind of the way i'm built so i've been lucky lately i i got uh, invited to the forbes council to help um folks in thought leadership in uh in the uh workplace arena and people management arena and that's something that's really beginning to take shape um essentially coming out of you know the 10 years of um helping put people to work in the drupal space uh, along with helping to make um great websites so um awesome the explosion in happy workplace and personal uh, uh well-being and alignment with our purpose um and that's just uh you know really like beyond uh, rejuvenating and exciting to me uh, to be able to bring, you know, the collective nature of collective collection of my experience uh, to help folks uh, along the way as they uh, get out and begin or uh, continue on their journey. Cool. And so, you know, Dory was talking a little bit about what, you know, purpose and, and what is it? right? What, what makes us feel fulfilled? And I think that comes down, you know, I mean, we all can understand, you know, we know all kind of know what that is. It's, it's what motivates a person, what's driving them is, is that, you know, commonly in the workplace in our Western world, especially, is that money, things, uh, you know, some people have boiled it down to time, uh, to do what they want, be with family, you know, climb mountains, whatever that is, um, knit, uh, and, uh, you know, I think that really, according to my readings and studies and experience, you know, kind of read things and then apply it, I think, you know, really, it, it isn't those things, possibly, for some, uh, for, for most of us, I think what it comes down to is to protect those that, that, that we love, right, and I think sometimes we forget that we, if that starts with us, right, like actually loving oneself. And I think that when you do that, when you, you find uh, the, you know, the ability, take the time to love oneself and then go out and, you know, sure, we have families, we have those around us that we're trying to build relationships and, and uh, sustain, uh, you know, our children, et cetera. 
that, you know, again, it's that old adage of doing what you love and we can get, you know, a little more scientific about it or, or what have you, you know, and sort of, you know, using uh, more sophisticated wording. But I think what it comes down to is, again, you know, finding what it is that you love. And for some of us here, you know, that's code, right? We, we got into that. We went to school for it. And uh, I know that, you know, in my 25 years um, and more in the workplace that many wind up finding out that they aren't necessarily exactly happy with what they have come to in their careers. And so um, I think that that's something that, you know, again, it comes down to good planning. It comes down to execution. And again, uh, you know, what is really execution? We're, we're going to practice, right? We're going to learn, we're going to trial, and we're going to practice what it is that we think we love doing. Um, and sometimes that isn't even always right on, you know, off the bat itself, right? So don't be afraid to fail or be wrong and, and so forth, right, as we, uh, as we iterate along our journey. Oh, I'm sorry, right? So, uh, and, and then again, um, on to how do we do that, right? Um, we need to be able to take care of ourselves. We need, you know, we, we hear a lot about ergonomics and so forth. I mean, if we, I, I suffer from these things myself. If we're not getting out in nature, if we're not getting up and moving, you know, it's degrading. It really is. It's not something that is sustainable. And, you know, we feel maybe for those of us that are a little bit younger, uh, we feel invincible. Um, but, and we read, oh, watch it, worry, you know, this could be a problem. You know, this company's doing that to help their workers and their ergonomics and, and so forth. And I think that, um, you know, you, you really do need to take that to heart because it, with it, uh, we have the ability to be so much more resilient and then deal with the many different things that come down the, the pike, so to speak, every day, right? The different stressors. So let's move on to the next element. And I think that that, you know, when we're, a lot of us, I think are, uh, you know, let's say purpose driven, right? Once we figure that out, I think if we, even if we don't know what our purpose is, we're purpose driven, you know, what's the purpose of this completion of our task? And uh, that is great. I think it's just important to make sure that you're doing that check right against your true values, what it is that you want and making sure that, you know, that even if that, you know, if I identified what that is, that it includes balance, right? We're not just, okay, you know, somebody like me, I could, you know, spend lifetimes just building stuff uh, and never, you know, go outside or eat, you know, it's just uh, can be, you know, come obsessive. So I think that that balance and, and really, uh, you know, doing the things that we were just talking about, sort of that personal well-being and, uh, you know, really keeping things in check can really lead to a deeper satisfaction uh, and feeling of, you know, really uh, being able to perform at a different level. And I think that that gives one the energy and the opportunity to, uh, you know, really, we talked about resilience, to rebound from almost anything and to look at almost any challenge as an opportunity. And that is something that not everyone, you know, it sounds like, oh, well, of course, right? But, you know, I know that one. Um, not everyone gets that, right? And I think that in my own experience in leading, um, which I, I lead some of the most fabulous people. I'm so very lucky. Um, I often have to say, you know, look guys, I mean, you know, luckily my fire department puts this up at the end of the road, you know, like every challenge is an opportunity, <laughs> but it is true, right? And we, we can uh, change our perspectives, right? Because uh, we definitely have the power within us to, you know, deal with absolutely anything that comes along. This is, this is definite. So, don't worry about it, right? Like, don't sweat the small stuff. We can get around it. There's going to be a way. There's going to be a better day if it's not a great day today, you know, for whatever reason is the case, so. So as Chris mentioned, um, finding purpose results in physical well-being. And you might be familiar with a neuroscientist named uh, Dr. Richard Davidson. And he works at the Center for Healthy Minds at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. And what they study there is the impact of cultivating well-being through a scientific understanding of your mind. Um, so well-being really creates the context for understanding purpose. Um, 
we care about this because it manifests itself in the body and in the mind, and it leads to greater happiness, which is really what, what we all want at the end of the day. So the center identified these four pillars of well-being, um, awareness, connection, insight, and purpose. And these are all trainable skills. And I'm going to talk a little bit about each one of them so that we have some context around our discussion on purpose. So first of all, awareness. Awareness is just the ability to be attentive to what's happening in your mind, in your body, and in your feelings. Um, so when you can regulate your attention, um, you can keep yourself from becoming distracted and functioning on autopilot. Um, connection is that feeling of just caring for other people and appreciating that everybody has their own perspectives and needs. Uh, we're all different and we all appreciate and value those differences. And insight is understanding how all these thoughts and emotions and beliefs that we are now aware of um, can shape who we are. And then we can challenge those beliefs as well. Um, this is our reality and we can accept it or we can challenge it. And so our introductory meditation was a good example of practicing insight. And so any one of these can be like a full conference session in itself. So I teach an eight-week program that um, assists us in connecting with these pillars of well-being. So today we're just going to deep dive focus on purpose. And purpose is building clarity around your core values and applying them to your daily life. And so you're going to quickly see how integrating purpose, how integrated purpose is with all these other pillars. You know, purpose allows you to feel fulfilled and accomplished. So it's important in your daily life because as Chris said, this is what provides you with motivation. So we all have these activities throughout the day that maybe we just don't want to do. So maybe you have like a boring report to write, um, putting in your timesheet um, or you're home and you have to wash the dishes. These are boring things, right? And understanding how our purpose connects with these activities actually gives them value. So you have this motivation to actually do things that you're not necessarily think you're connected to. So maybe you go and pick up the dry cleaning as an act of generosity. And you go, okay, I'm doing this because my purpose is to be of service. Okay? And maybe you offer to lead a workshop at work, even though you fear public speaking. And why might you want to do that? What could motivate you to do that? Maybe your purpose is to inspire other people. And so you can face these challenges. Um, so purpose is also significant because it strengthens and supports your values. Um, so you can act in alignment with what is important to you. I think we're on the next slide. Thank you. Um, if, for example, if you value collaboration, then maybe you'll step in and help a coworker when they're facing a critical deadline. So instead of feeling stepped upon, you go, hey, I value this collaboration, this thing that we all do together. So helping somebody else, even though you have a lot of work on your plate, doesn't quite feel as, as um, in, in, doesn't really impress a negativity on you because you've now aligned it to your purpose, okay? So you may end up making better decisions and just sort of being together and connected with, with yourself and your values. And finally, um, as Chris said, a strong sense of purpose is really key to resilience and recovery from setbacks. So we all have that moment when our projects just are not working out the way we expected them to. So maybe we know we're gonna miss a really important deadline and our clients are gonna be upset with us. Um, maybe a piece of code just isn't working and you just can't get it to do what you wanted it to do. So if you focus on your purpose, you can literally raise your tolerance for risk. If what you're doing is aligned with your purpose, you just start to open yourself up to finding solutions instead of losing your emotions. You just go, I really wanna be doing this this is important to me. This is important to my life. How can I make this work? Okay. So you find these different solutions and you actually learn from challenges that you face. 
Okay, next slide. So why is it so difficult to connect to your purpose in life and work? It is a challenge. And mostly because we just kind of rush through life on autopilot and we go from one thing to the next and we never consider why we believe, who we are and what we do. So first, we tend to define ourselves using nouns. So if we went around the room right now and said, what do you do? The answers that I would expect to hear are, I'm a UX designer, I'm a coder, I'm a technical lead, I'm a PHP developer. The problem is we're a lot of things at once. So when we're not doing that one thing, who are we really? Okay. So instead, can you look at your contribution as a verb? What do you do? So for example, I help organizations to envision a culture in which people can thrive. And this aligns with my purpose to be part of a world in which work is a healthy and supportive experience. So rather than saying, I'm a consultant, I'm a VP, I am a coder, I have found other ways to define myself using verbs. Okay. So now another reason finding purpose is really difficult is that our ego gets in the way. So we really focus on short-term goals. Okay. These are things that just bring us instant gratification. And you might be enticed to a job by a higher salary or by a fancy job title. And you need to ask yourself, why is money or a title important to you? Okay. Dig deeper. A, greater, a study of the Great Resignation shows that in 2022, knowledge workers are resigning not because they weren't paid enough or had the wrong job title. They're resigning because the work isn't bringing them fulfillment. Okay. So finding purpose requires this deep thinking and you don't necessarily get instant gratification. Okay, There's not immediate satisfaction from thinking deeply about what I need to do in my life. So can you see past the obvious, which is, hey, I want a cool job with a cool title and a lot of money and I want to work from home. Um, can you see past all that and search where the deeper meaning lies? Next, our heads are full of negative self-talk. So if a friend was being challenged right now, you'd put your arm around them and you'd say, hey, you're doing the best you can. But we don't put our arms around ourselves and say the same thing. We judge ourselves really harshly um, when we make mistakes and we tell ourselves all these stories that just justify our belief system. Um, and being critical of ourselves um, really keeps us from pursuing our desires. So sometimes you need to just question what, we be what you believe about yourself and find the spaciousness that you need to get out of your comfort zone and connect to your purpose. And you might make mistakes along the way. Things are not gonna necessarily go perfectly for you as you do this, but putting that self-criticism aside, just as you would for a friend and allowing yourself this space to try new things and find your purpose. So next. So, we're going to talk about some ways that you can center yourself and train your mind and develop the introspection that will lead to greatest, greater purpose alignment with your behavior. So first you, is clarifying your values. So what exactly is important to you? And ways to do this include journaling um, or inquiry. Um, so inquiry is about asking yourself questions. Why do I believe what I do about myself and others? Why do I believe that I'm not good enough to go after that job? Why do I think that that person in the cube next to me doesn't really work all that hard? Maybe I think they're lazy. Why do I believe these things? So instead of just accepting what we believe, start questioning it. Is it true? Is it partially true? Where did these beliefs come from? So take time either thinking or journaling about your own thoughts. Next, take some time for yourself. So pausing throughout the day, reviewing the tasks you need to complete and see how those tasks align with your values. 
So by creating this connection with your tasks and your values, you're, that's how you're going to build motivation. Okay. So if you find that you have tasks that really aren't moving you towards your purpose, maybe you drop them. Maybe you delegate them to somebody else who might be more aligned with doing that task on their purpose journey, because their journey is going to be different than yours. Um, so on a regular basis, just reconsidering how your goals align with your purpose, because your purpose isn't static. Life is not static. So adjust your goals accordingly. And there are three great questions you can ask yourself. One is, what do I want to leave behind? Number two, what do I want to keep doing? And number three, what do I want to start doing? Again, what do I want to leave behind? What do I want to keep doing? And what do I want to start doing? Okay, next, reframe your challenges. So in the late 1970s, um, Suzanne Kobasa conducted a study on um, telecom industry executives during deregulation. I can't think of anything more stressful than that. And she found out that people who embrace challenge as opportunity, as Chris mentioned before, um, gave people a greater capacity to deal with their stress. So rather than seeing yourself as a finished product, can you see yourself as a work in progress, right? Can we get out of our comfort zone? So when challenge becomes an opportunity rather than a threat, then we start to see how challenges align with our purpose. So if something is challenging us, can we see the connection there with the reason this is difficult, the reason this is hard for me, um, should not pull me away from doing it because it's an opportunity to strengthen my purpose around it. Okay, next, embracing self-compassion. Again, not, these things don't come easily. There is no assumption here that anything I'm talking about right now is easy to do. Okay, so observe when you're uncomfortable. What does discomfort and uncertainty tell you? Okay, maybe you need to be patient because your purpose, if you're on your purpose journey, you're going to get there with patience. Um, maybe you need to show yourself some self-compassion and try some new ideas because maybe you've fallen off a little bit from where your purpose is taking you. So building self-compassion. And finally, build your self-awareness by starting a meditation practice. Meditation really helps you look deeply into yourself. And, and I can't say this enough. It helps you to be honest with yourself about the stories that you tell yourself as to why you're doing things and what your purpose is. Um, it allows you to question what you find and stop being so judgmental and so negative um, about what's there. It helps you build your self-compassion. And it also helps you to accept other people because as I said, we're all on our own different journeys together. So we're together and yet everyone has their own purpose and path. So accepting ourselves, accepting others, having a meditation practice really helps us um, to look at all these aspects of our lives and to connect them with our purpose. So next, I'm going to pass this back to Chris, and he's going to discuss some really concrete, effective practices for building your purpose day to day. Thanks, Story. And I just want to say I, I couldn't agree more uh, about none of this being easy. So not. And no matter how much practice I find I get and other people around me, uh, you know, somewhat saying, wow, you know, maybe things come easy for you or what have you. That's definitely not the case. And I think, as Dory said as well, we're all different and we're all struggling with our own different, unique challenges. And yeah, how we choose to look at them can in, in, impact everything, you know, absolutely everything. Uh, starting with like, you know, the day we're going to have, the week, the month, the life, right? So um, building on what you learn has always worked for me. I've been lucky to get that, I guess, you know, without kind of going off in a bunch of different directions. And uh, even I think when I have been lucky to sort of parlay that into something, you know, an opportunity, right? Um, because, uh, I don't know, a, a, a talent, 
right? And I think that um, if we do understand some of these things, such as, um, you know, we, we take a walk in nature during the day, right? Um, many of us are working from home now. We have that opportunity, hopefully, where we live to take a walk outside and compare that uh, to the day we didn't. And I think that that really gives us the opportunity to identify, um, you know, the personal well-being piece. And as Story said, you know, I think that one of the other things that meditation does for you is it truly gives you this energy, right? That's the best way I could describe it, that increases things like patience and empathy and uh, the ability to deal with stress. And boy, I can't think of anyone that can't use a little more help in those areas. Um, in any case, you know, some of the other bullets that we wanted to reemphasize was just, you know, getting out there and connecting, um, really recognizing that, you know, in some professions, you are literally forced to continue your education because, you know, you're dealing with people or regulations or compliance or something like that. Um, but, you know, it turns out that's really something that's going to be valuable for just about everybody. And especially in this text context here of, uh, uh, you know, development where we're, you know, basically doing that like all day long. Uh, and so just doing that, I think even beyond that, right, we need to know how to build this next thing um, and truly taking it out of that microcosm and bringing it to the macrocosm of, you know, again, what are our values? How does that parlay into the skills that we want, uh, as Dorian mentioned as well, what do we want to start doing? And so um, beyond that, I think that we get to the point where we realize that we need, you know, to do what we want, what we love. And then it turns out, you know, that hopefully we took some time to understand what our values are there, right? So that that is aligned. And if that is the case, I can tell you, you know, I mean, I think we can make the analogy that many of us could resonate with. When there's a project, we care about the mission of that project we are all going to be a lot more excited about, you know, whatever that purpose is. And, and I have been there, you know, I've been on a lot of projects and can't always resonate with every one of them. Uh, but sometimes, uh, you know, maybe even the work setting is so terrible, you know, it's terrible, but um, you know, the purpose of the mission of the, of the project is so important that, you know, all that just washes away. So I think that that is, is very important in my opinion and experience when, you know, you get aligned, uh, it just is a wellspring, right, of, of uh, energy and um, passion, right, and that's noticeable for everyone. Um, next, please. So we talked about connecting, and I, I think to me, you know, it's like, maybe you've heard this before, you can't really do much for others unless you're centered and, and uh, on point yourself, right, feeling energized and, and strong and collected, but once you are, uh, truly, you know, the power of community and the ability to sort of form, you know, not sort of to, to form relationships that truly benefit and align with you and your values. Not everyone has this in their lives. And it definitely can be um, something that is, you know, makes things more difficult when you don't have, you know, let's think of it as a tribe or a community to turn to. And so don't undervalue it. It isn't something that always is going to be dropped into your lap, right? You know, you do have to kind of network and, you know, get down to the meetup, get down to, uh, you know, seek out what it is that um, meetings and, and communities that can truly benefit you through the activities that they're engaged in. And that is truly something that then you're applying that energy that you found in your own purpose to something greater than yourself. And that that is really, you know, a picture that becomes more full, more rich in my personal experience, um, you know, over decades in, in doing that and collaborating, um, you know, it's always, it's always the best friendships in a sense that form in that way. Um, and I think, you know, we all uh, relate to, well, you know, we can't really choose our family maybe, or we can't choose, but we can choose many relationships in our life that can be, you know, as or more fulfilling, um, you know, than those that we uh, inherit, if you will. So um, in my opinion, 
again, you know, we're also part of this very, very powerful community of Drupal currently. And um, it's uh, something that can provide so many rewards by getting involved and, you know, many of the sub communities and different fun, fun and wonderful things that people are working on uh, individually, you know, they're a part of this community because I, I certainly have uh, made some of the best relationships and friends, um, you know, ever in my life uh, here, that's for sure as well as, you know, been able to put together like three companies. So that were, that have been great too. So next, please. And, you know, along the way, uh, I, I not only provide people coaching, but I, I need it myself. And sometimes you can't even realize what you don't know. Uh, you know, Dory certainly is extremely helpful to me um, in realizing things I need to know that I am not, pol you know, polished or accomplished in. And so that's just one example. I'm sure there's you know, five others that, you know, I'm, I'm already, you know, trying myself uh, to um, help understand. And, you know, as they say, the coaches often, they'll tell you, hey, you know, we're going to help you get out of your own way. Um, and I think that that's important to recognize, right? That as Lori said, we're not a finished product. We'll never be a finished product. And uh, I'm a musician and this is something that, so when I was real little, you know, I was like seven years old. I met people are like, wow, you are really, really good at this. You know, like, you never stop learning, you know? And that was, I was like, wow, amazing. You never stop learning. Wow, I'm not gonna, you know, graduate in the eighth grade and then I'm like done. And then I go on to the next thing I learned now and I'm done. No, you know, we, we are always in need. We always... We have many mentors in this community. You know, a lot of our fabric is built on mentoring uh, and uh, bringing up, you know, those from below uh, to our level to be able to, you know, do stuff we don't want to do, basically. No, I'm kidding. But uh, the idea here of that support, right, where we um, can help people with our knowledge and then uh, help them a little bit along the way. I'm about to bring my son uh, on at 17 years old. Uh, he just turned 17 yesterday. He's going to work for me. Uh, and at esteemed and uh you know he asked me why he couldn't go off and work like alone right you know and i'm like well i don't know it's right in the red hat book you know it helps it's it's peer uh relationships and development right uh so you know just like the cranky old engineers who didn't want to do that at first they found the benefit after a short period of time and so will you son <laughs> so you know we all have uh, a lot to learn and coaches can truly be special uh, in all of that. And so uh, we very much support that at Esteemed. I support that in my personal life uh, for, you know, all different realms of development. It's, it's great to just have people you can uh, reach out to and speak in a candid way uh, without fear, you know, I think so. Next, please. And here we are, you know, in all of that and the talking about the juniors and, and folks uh, that really need um, help out there. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't attribute this to age by any means, you know, anybody can choose any any point in their life to decide to change something about themselves and, you know, go in a different direction. And I think Drupal is one of the opportunities out there that can really help people in that way. I know, you know, I never... I'm surprised when someone stands up at the Drupal mic and, you know, at an event, it's like, oh, this changed my life. You know, this changed my life. So, I mean, it definitely can do that. It is doing that. Um, you know, we run a business that helps to do that for people and organizations. And uh, the Drupal Association is doing something wonderful here with uh, the Discover Drupal program. And uh, I had learned about that initially, and we weren't really uh, at, in a position at the moment because we were really just um, pivoting the brand uh, to esteemed to get involved. But we, we now have been lucky to um, help on the second iteration of the cohorts there uh, of the program that is generally uh, helping to educate interns and um, folks in underrepresented groups out there to learn about Drupal, right? And go through the Drupal Easy program and Evolving Web and Drupalize Me and, and uh, you know, get some skills uh, on the front and the back and just kind of, you know, get a sense of what they uh, might be good at or enjoy uh, or don't. And uh, then uh, from there, they move on to uh, working with our uh, folks at Esteemed here to help them with their final project and uh, portfolio, as well as uh, code contributions in a, a sprint setting, formalized setting uh, for Esteemed projects listed on Drupal.org. We're beginning to do a number of different things there uh, in a space that um, 
is fairly underutilized with Drupal, um, which is the people management space and HR space. So that's exciting uh, in itself and to um, involve some of the folks that come from, you know, uh, uh, studies with Mike and LO and, you know, good tight relationships that we have. We're just super excited to be able to um, help with that kind of thing, uh, help evolve the program. We also are instrumental in helping the program go global um, and uh, help you from all over the world in the Drupal community as, uh, as opposed to just people in the United States. And so uh, we're just absolutely overwhelmed with that. Um, it, as far as, you know, just scrambling to make sure that we're ready for the folks and uh, we have our structure in place to be able to provide a, a strong and beneficial uh, environment for the grads. And in fact, I, I believe we're uh, in talks now to hire uh, one of the current grads from the current uh, program on that cohort. So that's really great and, and super exciting uh, working with Angie Sabin of the Drupal Association and um, just trying to help in the super most important area that we've been you know talking about for years uh, out here in the Drupal leadership community. And, um, you you know, just making it happen and along with doing all the other things that we all do, right, is is not often priority number one, unfortunately. So this is exciting to continue uh, to put energy and inertia behind uh, helping young people. So couldn't be more excited about that. And uh, overall, uh, just, you know, trying to help people with preparing for their careers, we're beginning to offer more training there, uh, and grooming, getting your developer rep um, up and, you know, involved in contrib and really understanding some, you know, the different areas that you can attend to, uh, to be more prepared and desirable for agencies, you know, some of our, you know, most uh, of our clients are agencies and this really just helps people get in, in and, and have some uh, confidence, right, and some representation, if you will, to say, you know, Albert Volkman, uh, you know, top Drupal contributor over the years has worked with this individual is, you know, he, he says that they, they can do with their, uh, you know, they can, they can hold their own, so to speak. So uh, that can go a long way uh, for someone to get uh, a chance right out there. So in any case, um, the more support we have for that program, the better off it's going to be if you know folks that you know would be interested in specifically volunteering for the discover drupal uh you know i know vaughn and angie uh, would really appreciate hearing from you over there at the drupal association uh and if you know you need any help uh with that contact then please don't hesitate to let us know thanks again everyone for coming thanks so much dory for sharing uh, your wonderful knowledge with us on this topic and allowing me to participate and, uh, you know, bring a little industry insight uh, as well on my side of things and what we're doing here at STEAM to try to help people uh, with coaching and community through our colleagues, uh, community, 1,500 folks, about 500, almost 500 Drupal developers now, uh, and uh, just helping overall to contribute to improving work life in the workplace. So join us on Slack today uh, through the link below and, uh, you know, join a number of your peers that are working anywhere and uh, helping each other, you know, enjoy work life. Uh, by providing that support and, and camaraderie uh, together. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks again. Enjoy the rest of your camp. Thank I think you. Coming to the end, right? So. Thanks, Chris. Right. Thanks, Story. Enjoy.